My Love for Broadcast and Telling Story started at Tux FM and it started in the newsroom at Tux FM and learning how to put together a bulletin, but essentially learning that radio is such a powerful media. Hey, welcome to the Lead EP podcast. We've been focusing at length in this season on success stories, whilst in the previous season we focused a lot on leadership stories. Uh, the University of Pretoria produces uh, a lot of uh, presenters, a lot of uh, hosts in uh, in the industry, in media, and uh, also Tux FM is also the most awarded campus radio station in the country. And if you're joining us for the first time, I'm your host, Lennox Wasara. And it remains the truth that broadcast media, broadcast news, remains one of the most trusted sources of information for many people around the world. And today we're joined by the broadcasting queen, Carmen Reddy herself. She started a journey at the University of Pretoria where she completed her honours and uh, that was in journalism. It was a BA honours in journalism. And Carmen has enjoyed the rare privilege of working with multiple media houses. Uh, whilst uh, she began her journey at Tux FM, she's also worked at 5FM, Prime Media, ENCA and Newsroom Africa. She's currently a media consultant. So her face might look familiar and her voice will probably ring a bell. Carmen, welcome and uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. I love that long intro. If I'd known it'd been that long, I'd have come earlier. But um, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. You, you're very passionate about broadcast. You're very passionate about uh, media itself. Where did it all start for you? I think it definitely started here at the University of Pretoria. I don't mean to be a cliche. Really, the my love for broadcast and telling stories started at Tux FM, and it started in the newsroom at Tux FM and learning how to put together a bulletin, but essentially learning that radio is such a powerful medium and you genuinely have almost power over people, not in any kind of negative way, but in a positive way. And you can harness that in such a big way by such a one voice, one small medium, reaches so many people. And that's really where my passion for broadcasting started. Was it because you were listening to somebody at some point, like, you know, as a child growing up, you listen to a particular presenter, you're like, oh, I like the way this person presents, I like that story, I like no, the whole idea of radio? A hundred percent. I think growing up in high school, I already knew that I wanted to tell stories and was interested in English and journalism, but also the idea that I felt connected to people on the radio that I would listen to. And I'd all, always listen to 5FM, grew up listening to 5FM, always wanted to work at 5FM, and eventually landed up doing that somehow. So yeah, definitely that passion for radio and, and realizing that you could tell a story and you become friends with people on the other side and realizing that I could do that, and that's amazing. And I would love to do that. And definitely working three hours is a big bonus, let's not lie. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Exactly. And and like you, obviously, starting at Tux FM, it meant so much for you to have the opportunity to to work there. I mean, you were an editor at some point uh, at Tux FM. Uh, what did the exposure mean to you, though, like for where you were headed? It meant everything. It gave me almost all the tools that I needed, except for obviously the actual studying and getting my degrees. But yeah, other than that, it gave me everything I needed. Not only did it teach me how, and it gave me the tools, but the infrastructure that we had at Tux FM, and they still have at Tux FM, is just phenomenal. The skills and the people that they hired were so careful and thought out, and, and they passed that on to us on a daily basis. So it was absolutely, yeah, it was priceless. You worked with a lot of different people that uh, you were working together at Tux FM at some point, and then later on you move on to commercial, to bigger opportunities, and you meet these people later again, I guess like meeting them at the top. Uh, what's that feeling like, you know, I mean, seeing your friends up there? It's amazing. It's amazing that the people that I listened to landed up being my colleagues. I think that's essentially you look at your industry and where you want to be and look at who those people are and you eventually want to become their rivals. Essentially, I think that's that's what it is and that's what it meant to me. Um, being able to work with such different people, but also having that connection when you walk into a room and my first TV job as well, the presenter, the main presenter was a Tux FM newsreader as well. And we immediately sparked a connection because I went to her and I said, you're from Tux FM, so am I. You know, it was my first commercial TV gig, but it gives you those bonds and those relations with people that you don't get elsewhere. So it's amazing to meet those people and to work with those people and you always have connections with them, which is great. Yeah. Earlier in my introduction, I spoke about Tux FM creating so many people in the industry. And like when I got my first commercial stint at Prime Media, you're one of the people that I actually met. You're like, oh, you're from Tux. And then we had like a bit of a conversation. Um, I just remember how like encouraging that can be like as a young person coming into the game, uh, meeting a lot of different people who have been doing this for some time. It can be quite encouraging, like, you know, if you join 
A hundred percent. And I think you need that support from other people, especially when you're young, going into a new big industry and you're a small fish and you come from tax and you come from tax of and we're big fishes in a small pond eventually. And then when you move on, you need other big fish to take care of you and to, to have that relationship with you because it's other people that did that for me, which is why I became what I became and started working at other places. And you've got to do that for other people. You have to uplift and it's you're just lucky if you also come from tax of him. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, she was that big fish to me. You know? <laughs> you're like, you're that big fish to me. Like, but I mean, one of the things though is like, in life, we have so many transitions, right? Uh, either you start off as a student and then you transition to, to work life and you have transition to being a parent and transition to many other things, maybe you become an entrepreneur and all that. One of the initial transitions is your identity shift from being a student to uh, working. What was that transition like for you? And what was your first sort of like stint? Which company were you working with? And how did that come about? Maybe you might have a story to tell. So it's actually quite difficult, I think, letting go of the student life because it's so fun and easy. And also you're learning, and I know the exams are not easy, but the rest of it is fun and easy and student life is great. Um, it was it was an easy sort of transitioning for me. I still worked at Tax FM as a news editor. And then I got a job um, as a well, I guess an intern and a freelance at Prime Media, which is 702 and 947. And I kind of did both for a bit and eventually had to let go of the campus thing and move on from radio. And it wasn't easy, but it's it's kind of that jump you need to make to get to the next place. Yeah. You can't be at like the same dock with your ship. If you Do you know what I mean? You've got to move on, but you also have to like be 100% there the whole time, if you know what I mean. So I had to like suck it up and move on and kind of be an adult. And it wasn't easy, but it's simply something that like, it's worth the bravery and eventually you're rewarded for moving on. Yeah. And then it does take a risk though. You know, like moving on, you've got to let go of something. You've got to let go of things you're familiar with. Uh, maybe somebody working a job or working a career. You're used to certain things. You know, you get used to the norm, the status quo, if it were. And then now you have to take the risk, take the leap of faith and, and try something different. I mean, that's not always easy. So I don't know how risk tolerant you are. So I think... When you're younger, you take bigger risks because you're stupid, right? And then you grow up and you learn and you kind of become wise. But it doesn't mean you shouldn't take the risks. You should 100% keep taking the, those risks because I think you get rewarded by the universe, by whoever you believe in, or just by yourself and your own soul. You're rewarded when you're brave and you're true to who you are and you do what you really makes your soul happy and what you want to do. And I really think like, yeah, it's a big risk, but you know what? It'll always be worth it. And even if it doesn't turn out well, it's a lesson. You learned that you made the wrong decision or you should have done something else. And it really is just a lesson plan. So I think like people always want to calculate risks, finance people. I know you've got a finance background. You always want to like figure out we want to know to the T how much yeah. everything costs. And sometimes you just can't live like that. You've just got to take those risks and be brave and hope that it works out. And if it doesn't, it's a lesson. Yeah, always looking for ways to mitigate risk. Obviously, you're starting off now, you let go of Tax FM, now you're in commercial. But, you know, there's a sense of joining a platform, the sense of joining uh, like the, the big players. Now you kind of feel like the urgency to prove yourself, like, okay, I actually need to belong here, or the sense to prove to yourself that you actually do can fit in. Um, what's that like? I mean, some people call this a sense of a social approval in an environment. How did you handle that, right? Because, I mean, you know you're good, but you still have to sort of like no. prove yourself. A hundred percent. I think you're constantly proving yourself, no matter how, wherever you are in your career, every single time you go on air or you go to work, you're proving yourself in that moment every day to yourself. But especially in the beginning, I understand what you mean. You almost want to be like, prove to everybody here, I'm good enough to be here. I'm not just a pretty face. You know, I've really worked hard to be here. I haven't, you know made friends to be here. I really deserve to be here. And that's that's what it is. Every single day, it's a battle with yourself. But it's also, you've got to be on top of your game. I think it's just a lesson all the time to always work hard, always be on top of your game. You never know who's listening, who's watching you. And you're, you're on broadcast, you're on show for the world at all times. And I really feel like nobody wants to see um, a toy with its head cut off, right? You want to see the whole package. And I think um, if you stay true to that, that's what you've got to give people. Being on top of your game in a newsroom is not easy. I mean, it's time pressure upon time pressure. I've, I've had the privilege to see you work and like writing an intense story and like the clock is moving. Um, but there's a lot there around working under pressure. Uh, what have you learned from all those moments that you've been under so much intense pressure? There's a breaking story or something of that sort. And, you know, like your heart's beating like, I've got to get this right. But when you reflect, perhaps there's some lessons that you've picked up uh, around that. 
hundred percent. I think I've also learned how that I can deal with pressure and we all can deal with pressure and there's no need to stress, but also that pressure, it's almost like it's addictive. It's like you want to feel it all the time, that adrenaline you get from yeah. writing a story and going on air. It's just, you can't like, like I said, it's priceless. You can't buy it. And I think, yeah, other than learning that I can work under pressure, it's just, you kind of, you skill yourself up and every single time you work under pressure, you get stronger, you get better, you get faster. And it's almost like you run your race each time and you just get stronger and better. And I think that's the lesson to like, not stress about the pressure that you're feeling, just kind of go with it and you'll be, you'll be able to do it. I think a lot of things are in our head and we tell ourselves we can't do it and we talk ourselves down or we talk ourselves out of situations and we don't need to, we should talk ourselves into situations and realize that like we can hundred percent all deal with the pressure. What are the things you've been able to do is like deal with pressure on both sides. So you've been able to do news and you've been able to do sport as well. Uh, how does sport come to the mix and how do you sort of like integrate the two and also to integrate, to switch between television and uh, radio, like how do these opportunities come? Well, the sport, I'll tell you, I have Tax FM to thank for that. Yeah. Because when you do work at Tax FM, you've got to know new sports and everything. So I'm um, definitely my passion for writing sports and doing sports broadcasting came from there. Um, I carry that through with television as well. And then in terms of, so the sports and the radio kind of just happened together. I also think broadcasting, it's not easy, but I really feel like radio gives you such a good background I really think radio people are really good on TV nobody kill me for saying this and I don't think everybody on TV can do radio mm -hmm. radio is so specific it's so skilled it's such an art and I really feel like yeah that's it's it's a it's a thin line and not everybody can do it I'm not saying I'm better because I can but not everybody can do it and I think you just have to adapt and decide what you really love and what you want to do and what you have a passion for yeah um Success, let's talk about success for a bit. You started at Tax FM, everything is probably going well, and you're like, you know, now you get on air, and I guess you get prime time at Tax FM as well. And then now you move over to different opportunities. What is your initial idea of success when you sort of join commercial stations? So initially, I mean, we know that media doesn't pay well and radio doesn't pay that well. So it was never money. That was never my sort of motivation, but I really did have a passion for for being on air and journalism, but obviously for being on a primetime slot and for being on air and for being at big stations. And that was always my goals. And that was something that I wanted to do. So initially, I always thought it was um, sort of being on a primetime show and becoming yeah. famous and well known and whatever. And we've, I've had the radio billboards and pictures and photo shoots, and I've done all of that. But that's not what it's about. And it really is about telling a story and having a passion for what you're doing, but also uplifting other people like you. So like when a Lennox walks in to a newsroom and you guys maybe have the same alumni and you come from the same place, you can really put your hand out and be like, this is how you do things and helping other people and being like, this is how you get into TV. This is how you do other stuff. I can help you. I can do things for other people. So I've really changed the way I look at myself in an environment in a work environment. So yeah, to answer that question, it's changed a lot. And I really think like I've moved away from being wanting to like be the star of the show and more just like using my skills and using my skills to help others as well. Yeah, it sounds like a perspective on service, liking to serve yeah, other people yes. in the process. You also worked with uh, some of the big uh, presenters at 5FM when it was a big show, a nationwide show. Tell us a bit about perhaps some of the things that you that happened in those days. Perhaps you might have a story to tell about some of the best times you've had there. Oh, I've got so many stories. I think radio gives you opportunities to see things and to work with people and to experience things that you would never normally get in any other industry or in any other job, um, including TV. Um, radio just opens your mind and your life to a different way. I've worked with Everybody from Alex J, Barney Simon, um, you know, Mark Pilgrim, all the older <laughs> guys, the OGs. Then I've worked with, you know, Fresh. I've met just about everybody that's, you know, big in the radio industry. And it just, the, and when you meet those people you re and you work with them, you realize how important it is to help others and be humble because that's where you get it from. That's where I've learned that from. I think that's my best stories. I mean, in terms of like crazy well stories, I don't know if we can talk about them here, but like I've just had really great experiences. You know, we've seen the world. World, we've traveled we've done just really amazing thing and had things and had really amazing experiences so yeah yeah i mean covid made us reimagine how a show can be conducted with different people in different locations you know and um which are which other places have you had the show where you think wow this was one of the coolest locations i never thought i would have actually have a show from this location wow i think doing going to cape town often with um 5fm and doing 
um, Espresso, which is TV and radio, doing that at the same time. So we broadcast it on TV while doing radio. That yeah, was pretty cool. fun. I won't lie, that was pretty epic. So yeah, that was probably one of the highlights that I can think of right now. But yeah, definitely that. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously a lot of young people that uh, look up to you in the game. Like I know I look up to you in the game. And also there's a lot of people that are probably listening now, watching on YouTube as well, that would love to consider you know, broadcasting as, as a career option and might not know all the details around that, how to go about that. But perhaps, you know, you might have some advice on how they can navigate their, their way into broadcasting. A hundred percent. I think firstly, I would say like in general, if you want to do radio, TV, whatever it is, something specific, have that goal, keep that goal in mind and keep working towards that goal constantly. So have an idea and a plan about how you're going to get to that goal. If you do want to work in radio, go find out how to get into radio. Go and ask people that work in radio. Go and look for radio jobs. Focus on whatever it is you want to do, but constantly work at it. Um, I think that's what we forget. You're, you're going to get so many no's. You're going to get no's. I've gotten a million no's more than I have yeses. You're going to get yeah. more no's than yeses, but it's about perseverance. So definitely, if you do have a specific broadcasting goal or dream that you want, go and find out how to get into that, how to make yourself the best person, the version of yourself, the best version of yourself, yeah. and then go and, and, and do that thing. So if you do want to work in television, go to television stations and find out, like, do I need a journalism degree? Do I need a broadcasting degree? Do I need to go do acting classes if I want to act and become famous? Like, you know, you just... Go and figure out what it is you want to do and go and find out how to do it and do it. I get the sense that perceptions are subjective and how people perceive you is their own perception of you. What then now do you do with all the no's? Because it's hard not to take them personal. 100% the no's come, but they're not nice. And those moments are not pleasant. They don't feel good. You want to look at yourself and be like, no, I suck. No, they don't like me. There's all these things, but we can't do that. The no's is just... It's just a redirection. It's just do something else or not for now. It's just, I don't think we, we need to look not look at those no's and be depressed about them. We need to strengthen. They, that's what makes you persevere. That's what makes you good at pressure. It's all the no's. So yeah, you just, you have to ignore the no's. It's really hard to do that. But eventually you come to a point where you realize that you're good at what you do and you are who you are and you've worked really hard. And if people don't like you and they don't want you at the moment, it's fine. It's maybe on them, as you said, perceptions. And you can only perceive me how you perceive yourself and how you perceive the world. You yeah. can't perceive me how I perceive myself. So you really can't worry about that. You just got to keep persevering. Five to 10 years from now, when oh, do wow. you see yourself? Um, hopefully um, rich <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, look, I really want to stay within this industry, within media, within broadcasting. I'd like to do media training. I'd love to one day open a media school um, for girls and little boys, but mainly for girls and just open up media schools in areas where kids won't be exposed to media because our leaders are not doing anything for us and we've got to do it ourselves. And children aren't exposed to radio studios and amazing places like this and universities. And I think the more we expose kids, the better. So I'd really like to, well, not own, but run a broadcasting school and just enlighten others. But yeah. Yeah. And, and, and wish you well with that. Hopefully when we chat again, you know, you'll be chatting about, you know, what you just mentioned now. Um, because I do believe in the power of ideas, but also the power of sharing your ideas. And my final thought now is around, you know, you welcome back to your alma mater. It's been, you know, the first time here at the Future Africa campus. Uh, it got me thinking, you know, what do you make of uh, what you've seen around campus and also uh, how the University of Pretoria enabled you for the success that you've been experiencing? So you've literally said those words, driving into South Campus after many years. I thought this, those, that's what I thought. I was like, this is amazing. I was part of something so great this institution is just incredible and that's why i've become what i've become i had this around me and was lucky enough to have the money to have, well have parents to pay for my fees etc but i was so blessed to have this opportunity and i cannot believe i'm so jealous that i'm not a student now i want to come back and study that's how much i love this campus i think it's absolutely phenomenal it's in the best location ever tux has grown and gotten stronger and bigger and better um, our vice chancellors have changed and they've gotten even better and bigger. And I just think it's amazing. I love to see how much we've grown and what we can do for people and what we can do for kids. It's just absolutely phenomenal. 
Yeah, that's true. Well, wonderful. It's uh, been wonderful to chat to you and uh, wish you all the best for the future. And hopefully we can hear more about that school that you spoke about moments ago. But from our side and uh, the University of Pretoria, I want to wish you well. And thanks for joining the LDB podcast in our final episode of season two. Thank you so much. I feel very special in the final episode. And um, I look forward to seeing you on television in future and hearing you all over the radio as well. So, yeah. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. That's uh, Common Ready, who has been so kind sharing a story a lot about resilience, right? No requires resilience, but most importantly, your passion will make a door for you if you do want to switch careers. But uh, from our side, uh, thank you so much. And uh, if you're wondering where you can connect with us on the Lead UP podcast, if you tune in via YouTube, you can find the Lead UP podcast at up.ac.za for slash lead up or wherever you find your podcast perhaps on spotify or apple podcasts and uh, this uh, last uh, episode will come out on the last monday of september and uh, this podcast is proudly produced by the university of pretoria's alumni relations office and our production team includes samantha castle Alna Schutz and our sound engineers who are bringing you the great audio quality as well as the visuals if you are tuned in via YouTube, uh, Libby Kluter Productions. But uh, to meet again, nothing but uh, love and light. Do enjoy uh, the other uh, episodes we've had. Perhaps you can reflect on those. But uh, till we meet again, goodbye. Mm-hmm.